What is going on people of YouTube? My name is Bikurt, yeah, welcome back to a brand new video of the review here today. And uh, it was an interesting week back. Um, it is a Thursday, so I've had time to think over things and get things ready. And yeah, quite a lot of things happened. Spurs managed to dive into a draw. That was, that was really bad. City were held by Burnley in uh, something I thought was going to be close, but City would nick by a goal or two. And Watford embarrassed Chelsea, albeit when they were down to 10 men. Um, there's a lot of interesting results, a lot of interesting games, and uh, the mighty Swansea still fight on, as uh, they are definitely going to survive. Trust me on that, but let's look at the goalkeepers before I start waffling. And the four goalkeepers I have for you this week is Lossal, Carrius, De Gea and Hennessy getting 10, 9, 6 and 5 points respectively. Lossal obviously playing for Huddersfield and losing 2-0 so you can see why he got 10 points there. No you can't, he basically saved him he got 3 bonus points, made a couple of saves, got up to 10 so sorted, didn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things because the rebound was scored by the taker Sanchez who got a goal on his debut albeit straight on his penalty duties and missed so... Maybe that's out of, the, out of the loop, but if he keeps on penalties for now, hopefully he'll score them and be more of an asset to us FBL players. Carrius, obviously, for Liverpool as well. Um, yep, yeah, save penalty, but it didn't come to anything because he didn't say the second one. So, what can you do? But there was some irony um, over it. Not really. Liverpool were just dicked by the ref and diving. So, unlucky for Carrius because otherwise there would have been a good win for Liverpool um, De Gea also clean sheet home to Huddersfield what on earth did you expect and Hennessy for Crystal Palace yeah one or you know five points not worth bringing in let's move on Moving on now to defenders, you've got Fernandes on 10 points, Danilo on 10 points, you've got Smalling and Jan Matt both on 8, and Koscielny and Jack Stevens on 7. Now Federico Fernandes um, had a pretty decent game week for Swansea, an assist from Ki Sung Young who didn't go anywhere in January, and you've got a goal for Federico Fernandes in a massive point against Leicester, away against Leicester, they're picking up some good points against some good teams, and Leicester, you know, see them as a constant top half of the table side even without Mares, so that is a good point for Swansea and at 4.4 million pounds they'll get more clean sheets they'll be higher at the back um, I've said it you know a hundred times since Carver Howard has been signed the amount of times that we got absolutely destroyed was minimal you know the goals very rarely came you know flushing down um, in comparison to how many other teams it might have happened to, so worth keeping an eye on those Swansea defenders. Man City obviously had a player in there, Danilo, scored a goal and get a clean sheet. He's not a long term option, so I'll ignore the £5 million pound man. You've also got Smalling, and Man United defenders I'm not really sure what to make. I brought Jones in, he didn't play, so yeah, uh, I'm not really sure about Man United defenders. Valencia's a constant, sure looks like he's signed a new contract. But you never know with Jose Mourinho. You've got Jan Matt as well. Nonsense. Don't listen to any Watford players that are in there. You're talking about Jan Matt. Looking further down, there is going to be a mention of a couple more. Don't don't read into them any more than the fact that they played against a 10-man Chelsea side that struggled to defend late on. That's it. You know, leave it there. Jan Matt get eight points. Not a long-term prospect, at least for this season. I don't think they've brought the right person in. And uh, they will continue to concede goals, so... Is my case on Jan Matt. You've also got Koscielny and Stevens working at seven points. Koscielny and um, picking up some vital, um, vital points because I was beginning to lose faith in Arsenal defenders, and I have Bellerin. So looking at that, Koscielny grabs a goal. Mustafi with the assist. You know you had Monreal in recent weeks. Feeling a bit sorry for myself, but hopefully it's Bellerin's turn next time a defender wants to get in on any FPO action. And you also got Jack Stevens. <sighs> Need I say more? Moving on to midfielders, we've got 20 point man called Ramsey. Grab himself a hat trick against Everton. I'm sure you've seen it everywhere, um, but not a, you know, too much of a long term option. So I'll get rid of him. The other players we've got, though, in the top scores this week, we've got Salah on 15, you've got Mikatarian, Gross, and De La Feu on 13, and James Ward Prowse on 12. Now, Salah, 10.4 million, massive, massive player, massive, massive price, massive, massive point scorer. And I do think Salah is going to be one of, if not the top scorer um, of points come the end of the season because the pace and the um, 
the efficiency Liverpool used going forward and the fact is it, the goal he scored against Tottenham was phenomenal. You know, you can't stop players like that when they're in this sort of form and the longer it carries on, the longer people like me who have had him in from a cheap price um, are going to be laughing. But he's still scoring even at 10.4, I'd say he's worth bringing in because next season he's going to be high priced. You also got Mkhitaryan finally getting in on the action, albeit <laughs> it was his second game. But I did expect it um, in the last Arsenal game, but it just wasn't meant to be. Mkhitaryan though I think is a great choice and definitely should be considered to bring in because he's got fantastic players around him. Arsenal attack more and it suits his type of play. Uh, we also got Pascal Gross, got a bit cold recently so I'd watch out for that but you know going forward on Brighton's best players so that's also something we should keep an eye on. You also got Dale Afeu, £6 million again. He could be good. I think at the back Watford are going to struggle but going forward Watford like they, they're going to do alright. But I'd reserve judgment on Gerard De La Feu until a couple more games um, to see what he's doing. And you also got James Ward Prowse. Main problem with James Ward Prowse, he doesn't get enough starting time. If he could nail down that spot for an entire season, I'd be happy. But he'll play for a couple of games, bit inconsistent still, and also sit on the bench a couple of times in the you know a six, seven game period. So you know you don't want you're gonna get but it's five um point one, so that's one of the positives for him. Lastly, we've got the attackers, and we've got Chicharito, Muset, Dini, Aubameyang, and Vardy. <sighs> Those first three I've read out couldn't be more average. Talking about average, Chicharito's in my team. I was looking for players to get rid of and bring in. Chicharito fit the bill, and I brought him in. And the last two game weeks, to be fair to him, he's done quite well. He's got eight points uh, this game week. I've just tried to load up his profile. It's taken a while. Yep, the attack and returns in all the last three games. Goal against Bournemouth and Brighton, and assist against Crystal Palace. And albeit they're having a bit of problems, he seems to be doing all right. Home against Watford, who I've just said will have problems at the back. I think Chicharito could be getting four attacking returns in four weeks. But maybe for the short term it'll be all right, but for the long term he could be a bit of a problem. So we've got a tough game after Watford. Uh, Mousset, 4.9. He's not going to be the first team striker for long. Um, if, if they get players back and you know fit to play up front, I think he'll lose his spot. But Mousset... He scored goals of 4.9. If he can get a starting spot for the next couple of game weeks, might it be worth a risk? In my eyes, no. But, uh, you know, biggest risks um, get the biggest rewards, but also the biggest falls. So bear that in mind. Dini. Scored penalty. Nothing else. Hasn't had the best of seasons, so I'd stay well away from him. If you're looking for Watford players, in case you're worried about them scoring a lot of goals, Dale Fayou, if anyone looks the best bet. But Dini, not really for me. Then you've got two good players, Bamiang and Vardy, two probably the quickest players in the Premier League. Bamiang 10.5, Vardy 8.6. Um, you know, I think they're both going to get a good couple of goals for the rest of the season. Bamiang, great pace, and he's, I think he showed it um, in his goal. And Vardy as well, penalty taker. Mahrez is, well, who knows where Mahrez is. Will we see him again in the Leicester shirt? Probably not. But those two, I think, are definitely worth considering. If you've got the money for Bamiang, I think he's going to be a good player. And that happens to be that for this video. Hopefully I've enjoyed it. If you like, comment, subscribe and let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of all the biggest point scorers? Have you got any of them in your team? And are you tempted to bring in a few risks? Maybe Mousset or maybe even Dale Lafayette or James Ward Prowse. Let me know all that in the comments down below. And thank you all for watching once again. See you all in the next video. Peace.